Hey everybody, this is Perky of Perky Perspectives. Today I have with me Ms. Jocelyn Bellows and we're going to do a love period episode. So before we get started, I just want to say thank you for everybody that has tuned in to the show. If you want to find more episodes, it's on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Radio Public. Um, it's also on my website, perksofwellness.org. It's on icn.dj slash perky perspectives. And please become a patron at patreon.com slash perky perspectives. It allows for me to travel and to bring on more guests and to just sometimes if I don't have the time to edit, to pay somebody to help me edit and to promote the show. So thank you for the support and you can find it there. Also, because it's a love period episode, I have to highlight our um, partner, a partner with Be Prepared Period. And you can find uh, feminine hygiene products. You can find educational material if you have, say, a daughter or just somebody that you want to teach more about menstruation and feminine hygiene and just all the weird hormones and stuff that comes with being a girl. <laughs> and so you can find that at tinyurl.com slash project. And also, you if you there's like a BOGO type deal. So if you buy one, you can give one to somebody in need. So And you can also donate to people in need if say you're a man and you have no use for feminine hygiene products that's another way that you can support so thanks again please check that out and everything will also be linked in the show notes so to get started with the show um we first start off by asking our guests how did you get introduced to period <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We got right in. So thank you so much for having me on the show, first and foremost. And my introduction to my period, a little convoluted. So I was, I was a little bit later in my journey into starting uh, my menstruation process. I, I had played soccer, um, gosh, since I was like eight years old and was playing on and women's and girls teams all girls teams throughout my you know junior high experience through into my high school experience so i was with all these other girls and they were starting to get their periods at like 11 12 13. me and, and we talked about it a little bit because it was you know it wasn't like the highlight of conversation but it was something that was happening for many many of us it was like that conversation along with the bras right? mm -hmm. i got mine at 15. and in oh. fact I got my first period. I was on vacation with my family. Um, my my father, my father's cousin had a cabin in upstate New York on the Finger Lakes in, in you know, the Lakes District. And we were up there on a, a family vacation. It was like a Fourth of July weekend where we spent a lot of our Fourth of Julys. And I remember that that morning that I got my first period, I actually drank coffee that day for the first time ever. And later that day, I got my period. And I will tell you, even though I knew that didn't cause it, there was a connection that I had for this, this really ridiculous well, connection. Coffee, but then my period. Yeah, I was like, coffee did this to me. What? <laughs> I said, I brought it on. Sure. Right? And that was, you know, that was my first introduction into my period. And, you know, it was embarrassing because I was, I didn't know. And I bled through all my stuff. And um, oh, I was the oldest. Too. I was on vacation with my family. Fortunately, it was all family, right? It was my family, my dad's cousin, and his his kids who were older than me, and um, some of them had kids of their own. So it was like this this big group of family. There was like 20 or 30 of us or something, and I'm in the midst of this massive change. Now, I think I was like there was an age gap between the older cousins and myself because the older cousins had kids of their own, so they were in their 20s, and here I am, my 15. 15. And it just felt really awkward, right? It was like, who do I talk to about this? Even though I could have obviously talked to anybody about it. Um, but it was embarrassing. And I just remember like having something tied around my waist the entire week I was there. I didn't want to put my bathing suit on. They had leg from free. It was, yeah, ugly. Oddly enough, oddly enough this weekend, I'm not even kidding you. We had this conversation. I was on a, a girls weekend with some girlfriends and we started talking about our periods. I'm, don't even ask me. Maybe I just knew this was coming. So I shared my journey, and I want to share this too, even though it's not my journey. However, I think just kind of a fun little, a little story, side story. So my girlfriend. Oh, I know why. I'll tell you why. Said. So my girlfriend, the, one of the girls I was on the vacation with, um, she was first of all adopted, and second, her, her um, adoptive family 
were very, very religious and they didn't talk a lot about openly about a lot of subject matter. So all she understood was that eggs shedded and that's caused her period. That's sort of all she knew. So what she did, she <laughs> so her period. Like, like egg shed, okay. Yeah, she decided <laughs> she wasn't gonna eat eggs because she said, didn't eat eggs, she wasn't gonna get her period. <laughs> that's so cute. It, I know, right. like, when you're little, and sometimes some people have started their period as early as, like, eight, you know, and so it's just, like, if you're told very little, like, some people think they're dying, you know, like, her, she's, like, okay, well, I'll get rid of that problem, I just won't eat eggs, like, <laughs> that's right. so cute, though, <laughs> so right. maybe, did they help her out when she had it, did they explain anything, or did she kind of confusedly go No. Through? She really didn't, and and so and true. Like here she is. Like I'm 43, and she and I are the same age. And so obviously she's learned about it. Um, however, it was you know there's that's uncovering for her is that was just one example of so many things that were not discussed in her childhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's since you know she's since learned her own birth story and and met her birth family. And um, she, so here's. Just a side note, she, um, she grew up in Ohio, and I live in Colorado these days, and she, this friend of mine also lives in Colorado now, and it wasn't, it was when she arrived here that she got an email sort of out of the blue from her birth brother, who lives five blocks from where she lives in Colorado, right? They've been just walking past each other this whole time. That's crazy. Yep. She's only been here for a year, and I think it was within her first oh. few weeks or few months of arriving and settling that they got this connection, and here he's so close to her, like physical distance. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, it's been quite, I, I know it's a total side story to- I mean, <laughs> but no, to go back to what you said about, you know, learning what you miss, a lot of women don't fully understand what they weren't taught until maybe they have a daughter, and then they have to explain it, and then they're like, oh, I don't know how to explain any of this. And some people rely on schools, which I'm wondering how that looks right now with COVID and how the schools were like shut down, like for that age range. I think it's like sixth grade when they start kind of talking about um, that health, you know, that health class where everything is thrown at you all at one time. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah, that's really, and that's why I'm glad that I have that partnership with the education because I, I kind of, my mom's, my mom's sex story for me was terrible, but I think the period story was a little bit better, but I feel like she explained way more when I actually had it. So it was like, all of a sudden my back started hurting and that still happens. I, I get periods irregularly. I get them uh -huh. after three months for the most part. And so I always kind of forget what it feels like when I'm about to have my period. And so, like, my back will start hurting. I'm like, oh, my back hurts. Like, I think I have, like, indigestion or something. I'm like, oh, what did I eat? Uh, and then, like, I go to the bathroom. And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, every time, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. And so, like, when I first started my period, I was like, I don't know what's happening. But my mom happened to work at a school. So I was with her at the school. And, like, she had stuff there already for me. And she was just like, oh, my daughter. And, like, you know. But I was just like, what is this? Like, <laughs> what is this? I, I have to say, I'm really grateful that you, that you've created this space. Uh, so the reason that my girlfriend and I were talking about our periods and it just like it hit me. So I was on a girls weekend. It was myself and two of my girlfriends. And then my one girlfriend brought her two daughters with her and her, she had just had this conversation with her older daughter who is, I get this right, 11. Mm -hmm. um, she just had this conversation about her period which is why we were talking about it. And, and then we also, we brought tarot cards with us over the course of the weekend. We were pulling tarot cards and this same daughter kept pulling cards about change and her. And so like, and, and so we're just sort of inquiring with this daughter, like, well, what does that represent for you? Right? My mind, my intuition's like flashing. It's, it, she's just, she's, her period's coming. <laughs> it's come. So they actually just had this conversation. Um, in the last few weeks about what to expect, what does it feel like, what are the methodologies of, of you know, what what do you use, um, you know, 
what are, you know, the mood swings, the changes in your body, all of that conversation was just happening. Mm -hmm. And so here we are. So here we are today having this conversation. And it's interesting So you and I, so I have PCOS. Are you familiar with PCOS? Have you heard of this? Not the acronym, maybe when you spell it out. Poly, uh, PCOS is polycystic ovaries. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I actually don't even have a cycle. Um, and I haven't for years. Now I can certainly correct that medically. Um, I've chosen not to, that's just been my journey. And I, and the reason I haven't discovered it was when I was, while I was still married and we were looking to start a family and I went to the doctor just to check everything out. And that was when it was discovered. Mm. And because of that, because of the irregularity of my cycle, or really much non-existence of it, the ability for me to get pregnant was going to be very, very slim to non-existent. And I got pregnant. And I have a, I have a very healthy, almost six-year-old to this day. Thank you. Did you need any aid um, to get it? No? Or get pregnant? We, we had that conversation. Uh, for sure, we had several conversations, and we looked at you know fertility treatments. We looked at different options, and I and because I was an older mom, I had my son when I was thirty seven. Yeah, thirty seven. About that. <laughs> um, I I had a lot of friends at that point who had already had children, and I had a lot of friends who and friends of friends who were going through who had gone through fertility treatments, multiple doses of it, and I sort of was a voyeur of their experience. And it didn't, everything that I had seen, it just felt like so much stress. Like, you know, it was like, you're timing your cycle, you're, t you're, you're taking your temperature. It's like, okay, we're now on a mission. It's not like sex isn't enjoyable. Sex is, is a mission to get to an end goal, which right. is you know, conceiving a child. And, and none of that, right? Yeah, yeah, none of that aligned for me. Yeah. None of, I was like, I don't want the medical induction. It just, that didn't feel good to me. And watching these other couples, some of which unraveled, right? Yeah. That's right. Like, and so I had to kind of take a step back and say, what's the purpose of having a child? What's my purpose in having a child? Mm -hmm. Contracted, I created for that. And everything I just kept coming back to was like, I just kept backing away and backing away and backing away and saying, and eventually got to a point that I said, if I'm meant to be a parent, I will be a parent. And I stopped thinking about it. And, you know, that was probably about 30, yeah, 35, 36 is when I, you know, I was married at 32. And fortunately, my um, husband at the time was in agreement. He was like, yeah, that's fine. You know, if that's what feels right to you, I will honor that. And so we just eventually just stopped talking. We stopped talking about that subject in particular. We put the like the word out there in the world that okay, this is if it's meant to be, it will. And we just didn't think about it, let it go, let it be, and boom, I was pregnant. It was like, and I thought, and honestly, like I actually was four months pregnant when I found out I was pregnant. Oh wow, you yeah. are almost halfway through the pregnancy. I was. I had. <laughs> I had the easiest, easiest pregnancy um, I think most anyone could have because I missed half of it. <laughs> I, I, was kind of panic. I have like a slight panic, like I hope I wasn't drinking, I hope I wasn't doing anything. I was <laughs> what was but outside of that, like <laughs> well, funny because I reflect on that time. I have, of course, and at the time I had a pretty lucrative career. I was a director in a. Um, I was a director of my job, and so I was. I had a lot of responsibility. Um, we owned our own business as well, so mm -hmm. I was working seven days a week. Wow! And exhaustion was just normal, right? That's all I felt, and right. the period wasn't happening, so that was also normal. Right? So I was like, "These are normal things." However, and however, the business that we owned, we owned a bicycle shop, and we had a lot of socialization around that. And part of the socialization was alcohol, and I remember, like, I would. I was drinking a little, but it didn't taste good anymore. Mm. And so it wasn't finishing anything. Like I was having a couple sips of beer, putting it down. I wasn't having any wine. It just didn't align. Well, here, it was actually my body saying, right, right, right. now, put it down. Put it down. 
Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I, I never, I, it, fortunately, like I look back and said, okay, I, I know that I didn't, I didn't do anything to do any damage. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then I just, when I found out, um, I just, all I wanted to do was like, cr I craved fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, like really healthy food that felt good. Mm -hmm. I think that I, I really like pregnancy suited me very well, except for maybe the weight gain. <laughs> Right. Well, that's really good that you at least listen, because I think part of it, I mean, and it's, you seem to be pretty like in tune with uh, at least like certain frequencies, like seeing that you do tarot cards and things and you listen to your intuition, because I think that's what messes up a lot of women's health, not just women, but people, period. But right now we're talking about women um, is that we ignore our intuition and that comes with not only what we eat and how we like exercise, but also the interactions that we have when it comes to other people and just ignoring red flags. Like sometimes it'll be right there. Like, like you say, your body was telling you to eat fruits and veggies, but some people would still be like, nah, but I want to eat these fries. <laughs> and it's like, no, but it's literally like your body is telling you like, this is what it wants. This is what it needs to heal. And you're ignoring it and same way like relationships which i'm sure you could speak a lot on <laughs> sure sure and you're out and it does it, it you know you sh when you show up one way in one like this way in one aspect of your life you actually show up the same way throughout your life if you're mm -hmm. really truly aligned with your being and who you are meant to be you show up the same way through everything you, that's important that you do Yes, it's important yes. that you do. Not everyone does because we all wear masks. And I want to just address this for a moment because now we're, I don't know, 20 minutes in. My black eye. <laughs> I'm just going to just put it out there so, it, so it's known. I was um, going to bring it up when you say your lovely son. And I was like, that's no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I do love my little child, but he, yeah, he's a contributing factor to this. Um, it's my beautiful black eye. Um, so over the end of the course of last week, I was at a girlfriend's house and we were jumping on a trampoline and, and he and I were just jumping on the trampoline and he bumped the top of my eyebrow, which caused my black eye. So not, a, you know, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm healing. My eye is fine. I, my body's doing what it needs to do. However, I want to bring this up because it sort of leads us into the next round of this conversation. Um, this is a physical manifestation of some things that are going on in my personal life. Mm -hmm. that I wasn't addressing. So I yeah, isn't it funny how the universe has a way of just... <laughs> like, it's stopping you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to say it plain. Yeah. Can I edit that out later? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it bitch slapped me. <laughs> so, yeah, so just and to be really super honest, um, I moved out to Colorado um, just over three years ago. And... Shortly after moving here, I, I had, in order to make the move, I um, left my career. And this was a choice, right? It wasn't a force. It was like, we had this very, we had a very conscious conversation for many months about making this move. My employer knew for nine months that we were going to make this move. Mm -hmm. And um, they actually were be like beautifully released me and I received a, a wonderful gift to go. And, and go follow my next dream. In fact, this employer, former employer, still communicate with many of these people to this day, three years later, how beautiful it was. Anyway, side note, we make this move. Um, he's traveling back and forth to still, still run our business. And I have all this space for the first time in my life. My son is three at this point and he's going to preschool. So I have the space to like investigate what the next round of my life is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And I started having real. And did you just turn forty? I'm forty three. No, I'm saying at the time, did you? Oh, have at the time, I had I had turned forty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The just... time that like everything was shifting, all at that. <laughs> oh yeah, lots of shifts. Lots of shifts. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I I had a lot of realizations in this space, in this quiet, because we we live in a society that values busy, not productive, busy. Because mm -hmm. there's a different thing. And all of a sudden, I was unbusy because I was no longer working. My child was at school part time. And that was intentional because I, I wanted that space to look for jobs and be able to interview and all this. And for him, because he was going to start preschool, like he started going to daycare at three months old because I just knew for myself, for my own health, I wanted to go back to work. Mm -hmm. 
And so I did. And so this was a good socialization for him um, and education. And he was a social kid, like fully supportive. And my husband's frequently out of town running our business, Mm -hmm. which I also supported. It was fine. However, I had a lot of realizations about my own unhappiness. And I wasn't aligned. I wasn't living a happy life. And I wasn't aligned and I was not honoring me. My relationship with myself was God awful. Okay, so to cut you off slightly, okay. Mm -hmm. So I personally, I've never been married and I also Mm -hmm. do not have children, right? And one of my fears, because I've had relationships and they all seem to be just distractions or something that's like, like you said, not aligned with what makes me happy. So my Mm -hmm. fear is like, I'm going to get married and it's going to (laughs) be terrible for me. So like, did you have, um, did you have like, did you feel like you were figured out as far as like how you were as a person before you got married? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not no. Reflectively, in that moment, maybe there was there was that something there was a conversation that we had had um, around at the time my he was with my fiance and he was interested in building his first business before the bike shop and um, we'd had a few conversations around that and we were out of alignment around that conversation in particular. Okay. And I remember, I will tell you, like, I can tell you if I go back to that moment, I remember questioning myself and saying, is this the person that I, I want to be with because we're so at odds with this particular business venture. Um, And I questioned it and I just, I just chalked it up to cold feet. And I really didn't talk with anyone around it. Mm-hmm. I feel like when we don't talk about stuff, it's because we're scared that they're going to tell us what we already know. <laughs> so we're like, no. Oh. <laughs> and that, I'm so glad you heard. I'm going to take that and run with that for a moment because that was my life throughout my marriage. Mm. Um, I didn't share very much. I, I noticed that some of the people who I loved very dearly as friends were no longer in my life. Mm. Now they lived elsewhere. They didn't, they, you know, cause I, I had moved from New York city to California to move to Pennsylvania to, for this relationship. So like I I'd left New York to go to California to follow my dream of living in, in the West coast, came back um, to Pennsylvania for this relationship. Cause we had been dated, we had dated previously and we had gotten back together in the time of me making this move to California. Right. Okay. Um, The point of not acknowledging or not asking or bringing other people into your world, I lived a very closed life throughout my marriage by choice because I, something inside of me probably already knew that I was not living in a life that I knew that was the best for me. Mm -hmm. And this is this for me because I didn't love me. I well, chose people that say that you're not supposed to let other people into your marriage, like in, and, and give you, a, what about that? What will be your counter for that? Um, I, I'm going to counter that by saying it's, you hold a boundary and that's, and that's okay. It's, it's important. Like we're not islands. None of us are. Mm-hmm. And it is important that we have relationships outside of our marriage friendships outside of our marriage right it's called unattachment okay Um, in every friendship and relationship you carry every single one you you can come together in this beautiful union and choose each other however you need to choose you first right with every decision that you make about you know, does this feel good? Does it not feel good? And if you, gosh, we go, we all, we all go off course. We all do it. We're, we're all spirit living in this human experience, mm-hmm. right? So we're, we're still learning. We're still experimenting and trying things on. So yes, are you going to make decisions um, that may it best align with you within the construct of the comfort of that, that union? Sure, we all do. What's important is that you acknowledge that say okay well it's like an example of this is um you know let's just say like you're in a new relationship and you're so excited to spend time with this person however every time like you're with their friends you kind of feel 
not quite as seen or right. as important. So maybe the next time that you are asked to join their friends in a, an activity and you have now the choice to say, well, I want to have this conversation with my partner and say, thank you for this opportunity. I know this is important to you. I don't feel seen when I'm with these people. Like, own that. Own it. Yeah. Say it. Communicate it. And if it means that you just don't spend time with that person you're dating for that evening because they're, they want to spend time with their friends, or you, you either opt out or you opt in, and now your partner has acknowledged this, and now you get to communicate that together. Right. Or you guys get in an argument, and now you see that you wasn't meant to be with them anyways. <laughs> and that also, I mean, that could also be the thing. So, like, what did we talk about, too? I, I think this is really kind of it drives it very nicely. Um, we talk about when we, we begin a union, and that, but, that moment of butterflies, like, you're so excited mm -hmm. to spend time with them. Guess what? Your body will always know what's best for you. As long as you're in tune with it, your intuition, your body will give you those signs. Yep. So if someone, like if you get nervous around somebody, that's actually telling you that this isn't your person. Truly. Well, kind of nervous. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> oh, but like, but it's enjoyment and excitement, but like really it, it's meant to feel calm. Yeah, 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 that's true. It's meant, to feel, it's meant to feel just easy. So, like, if you look back, and it, if you look back over the course of your relationships, I, like, I'll, I'll give an example of this. There, there is, are two men in particular in my past that I met as friends, and it was just, it was very natural, very easy. Like, it wasn't, there was no attachment to the idea of us dating. Mm -hmm. We're friends, and we evolved as friends. And I always felt safe. For me, I felt I did feel encased in love, even though it was a friendship love. Nice. And these, both of these, although neither one in neither situation did these, did I actually these go on to dating? Um, well, one sort of did, um, because I I kept holding back. There was something inside of me saying these aren't still are the people. Like these two wonderful, amazing human beings who I love dearly. However, I will say that there was never a moment at which I felt uncomfortable in their presence throughout the terms of our time together. Mm -hmm. When it came time to sort of separate out, that's when my body started reacting. That's when I started to get nervous or antsy or anxious or bad in some cases being with them because I felt that the connection that we had was starting to disintegrate mm. and I felt it I felt it in my body I didn't yeah. think it I felt it I think that's happened to me well it does happen to me like and it's it sometimes a small it, it's not always as intense as that it might be like somebody will tell me oh we're gonna hang out especially if we were dating um like they might tell me oh yeah I'll see you this day or I'll see you whatever and immediately I'd be like no they're not like I would just know like, <laughs> okay, okay. happen and I think only one time was I wrong and that was maybe just me just like working with their inconsistencies but yeah like I'll get those feelings sometimes like oh like I like a lot of my friendships or some of even some of my romantic relations that have ended and we didn't necessarily say, hey, we're not talking anymore. I had the feeling like the last time we spoke and it just like neither one of us said anything to each other moving forward. It was like we both kind of just knew like, oh, check it out. It. Yeah, <laughs> that was mm -hmm. it. I think that's cool, though. Like I would rather stuff happen um, on that mutual ground, even if it's uncomfortable rather than yes. having to be in an argument or a fight or something like that, like really makes you like, like you said, Agitated. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to turn the light on because I'm realizing how dark it is. No, I'll be right back. Cause I want, I want to add to that piece of the conversation. So when my last relationship ended and we, you know, we knew, 
right? We had, we'd already sort of realized the conversations were starting to become more challenging and we weren't relating very, we weren't relating organically like we had been. Mm -hmm. um, I was feeling physical pain in my body. I can't speak to what his was, but I know I was feeling physical pain. I was feeling agitation in my being. I already knew before I knew. And so when we really finally had that conversation, because we really had a conscientious time together we were very we were very communicative through most through most of it not all of it but through most of it and when we decided to just cut ties um you know, the first conversation was was challenging because still care very deeply for this person and also knowing that this person and i are no longer aligned um that first conversation was very difficult and he brought over a bunch of my stuff that was deposited at his home and he'd forgotten something at his house. So he had come back and he came back a few days later and it was a you know planned time that he was going to come over. And I remember right before he arrived, I had dropped my son off to, with his dad because I didn't want my son to, it was intentional not that my son was not going to be here when we had this conversation, even though they had met, um, I didn't want him around it. And right as I was coming home, I received a phone call from a tapping therapist, someone who I reached out to because I was interested in learning about tapping therapy. And even though we didn't talk about, we talked a little bit about it, she calmed me. It was like the timing was so appropriate because she got me into a place where I was able to shift how I was going to approach this, this final, final conversation. Mm -hmm. And then I just, I had a couple of minutes before he arrived and I journaled all I was, and I wrote, I am love. And I just shifted my whole point of view. Mm -hmm. So when he arrived, we ended up talking for like an hour and a half. It was meant to be, I didn't know what to expect. I had no expectation. I just thought, like, is he going to drop my stuff off at the door and leave? I don't know, you know? And we had this very, this incredibly beautiful conversation. And we really dove into the things that we didn't communicate throughout the time, our time together, the things that were really, that he was holding onto, that he was putting on me and projecting on me, things that I was holding onto and projecting onto him. Mm -hmm. And we weren't communicating on that at all. And in truth, we had this conversation. We held hands like the entire time. And there was so much love in this space, knowing that we were making the right decision for both of us. And when he left my door for that last time, he was beaming, and so was I. Oh, that's nice. And and you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you like, have I had fallout? Absolutely. <laughs> Is there still stuff you, like? I, and I've been able to. I know a separation of it's not him. It's a lot of what he represented. And I have the past trauma that I'm still resolving around my own life right. that isn't his. It's mine. In that. In that construct though in that in that space we were able to have a very conscientious conversation about how we saw each other and what we care and how we cared about one another during our time together and it was beautiful mm -hmm. it was beautiful and in that case because of the time we spent together that was i know what i needed to resolve even though the resolve had to be mine regardless let's just say the conversation didn't have because converse, those conversations don't always happen, you resolve it within yourself anyway. Um, that was a beautiful way for us. Now, I've had, I've dated like barely since, mm -hmm. and I've had those ones that have just fallen away. I'm like, yep, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm glad I didn't have to say that. <laughs> you know, anyway, coming back to all this though, it's, you know, what I do, what I am, I'm a breakup to wake up coach, is my title. And really, what that is, you know, people hear that and like, oh, break up with a relationship. Well, kind of. It, it's really breaking up with the bullshit that you create for yourself yeah. about yourself. Like you, you said, you, you say you have these moments where, like, oh yeah, they're not, that thing's not going to happen. Actually, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to turn the table. I'm an interviewer too, so I, I'll only do this. I'll try not to. Do this. All right. <laughs> However, you know, sometimes it happens. Um, I'm just curious. If there's anything that comes up in your life that you are like, that you've talked negatively about yourself, is there, is there a particular theme in your life that you feel like you've 
you're undeserving you're un oh uh yeah i guess uh keeping it on topic i i say a lot that i'm single for life <laughs> or that i pick bad partners and i try to like snap myself out of it because i know like i'm only 28 which is starting to feel older and older the more i say it but i'm only 28 so i do recognize that i'm still at an age to where relationships are still about like you know dating and seeing what exactly you like but also on the outside looking into my life i'm old to not be like in a serious relationship or at least that's what i perceive people look at me as um but yeah like i'm i'm at the point to where i would i don't know if i want to get married because my relationships have been so uh, that i'm like do i really want to be with one person that might be crappy for the rest of my life or do i want to be able to make like i can like I, I just made a decision today that i might go out the country again and you can't just do that so like with a, a marriage and a kid most of the time you can't just be like yeah i'm gonna just leave and just do my thing so like it's also fair around like will i still have this independence and this freedom and still feel like i could be myself and not distracted and thrown off if i was in a serious relationship and then if i do get in a serious relationship am i going to continue to pick these people that I know I don't have no business being with. <laughs> so now I'm just like oh, single for life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. So you're so you know what I hear? It's like you're blocking allowing you're blocking love to enter in your life. Yeah. You're doing it. I want it at the same time. Like I I mean I look towards people and I'm like, yeah, I would love to have a boyfriend, but I think I just I um so I didn't really date. I was like you, I played sports a lot like I, I ran track collegiately so like I I did sports for a really long time and um I didn't really date like that was kind of my focus like not that I didn't want to but uh also I went to school with a lot of people high school with a lot of people that I wasn't attracted to in that way they weren't of my ethnic group they didn't have a lot of experience and nor did I feel like they were looking towards me as attractive so it was like it was just a lot of like not not gonna happen here and so when I started trying in college, it was just like, oh, terrible. Like all the stuff that I feel like I should have learned in high school from dating, I didn't have. So I'm trying to learn it with people that already know the game. And so they're using me or they're putting their what they've learned onto me. And, and so then it, it was just a lot of like trial and error to where it started to feel habitual. Like I'm, I'm mm -hmm. continuously getting with these people that are doing me the same way because that's all I know because I didn't have a time to really like work through that so as far as me dating like I'm kind of blocking love but I would like to just date like just date like can we just go on dates can I like get to know you but now I have degrees and I have all these things going for me so people they see me and they they want to just um they want to kind of put me in the corner because they're like, oh, she's going somewhere. Like, I see her. She got all these things going for her. I want to have her, but I don't want to really be with her. So mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, forget it. Like, <laughs> like nah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, we, our journey is quite similar in that respect. I, I didn't date in high school. I barely mm -hmm. dated in college. And I dated a little bit through my 20s um, until I met my now former husband mm -hmm. and a lot of what you say resonates very much with me um and in truth the shift occurred when i decided that i was no longer going to live in this small space of being because i know somewhere inside of me there is a fire that is burning my fire was really extinguished throughout my marriage i did that to myself mm -hmm. I, I can tell you that i did that to myself because i didn't choose me i kept choosing taking care of him my child everybody else mm -hmm. i didn't choose to take care of me and love me the day i decided that i was going to start to choose me it was a radical shift in my life radical and it, it wasn't it didn't happen overnight it took a year. It really did. Um, I began working with my very first coach and I started to do a nutritional cleanse because I wanted to detoxify my body and I wanted to detoxify my mind because I'd 
been in this relationship that just I didn't allow myself to grow. Mm -hmm. I limited my own potential. Yeah. What I knew I could be. I knew how awesome I am, yet I didn't allow it to happen. As I started to learn truly to see myself as a goddess, I mean, like, I was, I, I spent six months with my first coach and I envisioned myself truly like as this ray of light. And I did this for months, for every week, for months on end. And I changed how I talked to myself. I changed how I talked about myself. I started to really imbibe what gratitude actually meant. Not just being like, I wake up and I'm grateful that I have a bed to sleep in. I am grateful that I have a bed and I get to wake up every morning. And I'm grateful that I have a healthy child. I'm grateful that I'm healthy. And like really what, what that feels like. Not just saying it, but what it feels like inside of my being. And the more that I start to allow that to be, stop pushing, just allowing, I start floating through life. Mm -hmm. Because I changed my narrative. That's so funny you said floating, because one of my mentors, he's my birthday twin. <laughs> ah, your birthday, but curious. I'm 26. Okay. And he always tells me, he's just, well, he'll call me and he'll be like, are you floating, my dear? <laughs> like, I'm floating, I'm floating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's definitely different. Like, it, and I think to, like, um, uplift, like, what floating means to me. I would say floating is like, cause you know, sometimes you wake up and it's like, ah, uh, uh, I gotta get up at this time and I gotta do this. And oh my gosh, to me, that's like dragging. Like you, you're, you're moving, but it's like, everything is a push pull type thing. And then there's this like extreme to where it's like, I'm flying and <laughs> everything is perfect. and blah. But it's like, we know that life is a frequency. So there's gonna be ups and downs. So I feel like the flow, is more so like if you think of like the heartbeat, that middle line that's in between, it's like you know there's the up and down, but you're still like moving through it and you're you know you're gonna continue and it's gonna get better or worse, but you like still float through it. Like that's how I see it when he when he when he asked me that. I'm like, yeah, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> it's funny, I literally had this conversation with my mom today, who I think has had some intuitive hits and, and, and like spiritual hits she's not spiritually like she's not awake she is sleepwalking in a lot of ways however she's had moments in her life she's had some realizations and I think because my sister and I have been on our own journey for multiple years and we've had like little conversations with my mom who is an empath by the way and she's finally acknowledged that <laughs> she actually knows it now um we had this conversation this evening about just being content, that, that line, mm -hmm. just contentment. Everything above it is the, is the like awesomeness. Yeah. Below it, it, it's part of our, our space of the human experience. Like we need to, it's the yin and yang, right? It's like, you have to have, you get to have the highs. And if you get the lows, you, you now know that the contrast, right. High, right. It's part of this human experience that we're having. However, if you can live in this place of contentment for most of it, and you know that, that the lows are going to come back to contentment, and the highs are going to come back to contentment, this is a pretty amazing place to live. Balance, yeah. Balance. And it, it, it comes from in your being, not up here. I mean, I know I have a lot of friends who are mindset coaches. It's, yes, this is part of it. It's really like actually disengaging this, really dropping into this. Mm -hmm. When you get to drop into this, and understanding that we're all connected, like the force exists. <laughs> yes, the Star Wars force, it exists. Right. And understanding and living in that space just ease. Mm -hmm. That's not easy to do. Like you can't snap your fingers. That's not true. I can't say that. For me, it took me a good six months of really con consistently choosing me saying no for me for me it was saying no to alcohol it was for me saying yes to good sleep yes to drinking lots of water yes to eating well um yes to the things that continue to make me happy and saying no to the things that felt 
yucky. You just keep doing that. And I stayed in a bubble. I'll be honest, I stayed in a bubble for a while um, until I really embodied this. And then I got to- You have to isolate though. Like, I mean, I think we all naturally isolate, but we don't maybe practice what we're supposed to do when we're isolating. Like there's some people they isolate and they just play video games or like find a distraction. But it's like, no, like your being is telling you to take this time out for yourself so you can actually focus on yourself. Not, you know, like some people they isolate is like, ah, oh, I just can't mess with nobody right now because wooty wooty woo. But then it's like, then you leave from that isolation space and then you go back to doing exactly what you were doing before you isolated. So you didn't have any real growth during that time. But yeah, like, I mean, my, it's funny. I think everything kind of happened at the same time for me with the COVID stuff. Like, uh -huh. and I know COVID is a pandemic that has been very tra tragic, so I don't mean to downplay it in any way, but it's like, it had, like, the time it was perfect, like, I hate working nine to five jobs, like, I really do, like, if you listen to any of my podcasts, one of my intros is just like, I just want to run, run away from it all, and I did, I ran away to Jamaica, and I actually had intentions to stay out there for way longer than I actually did, then I came back out here, and I was working, uh, well, actually, because I left my job, so then I didn't have, like, the job that I needed to actually take care of myself, and I'm like, ah, so then I'm feeling, like, bad for, like, making a poor decision, you know, but you didn't, though. no, I didn't, because what ended up happening was I got COVID started, mm -hmm. and then it took me, like, maybe a couple weeks to get a job, because thankfully I have a degree, so I was able to get a job, um that took care of me in the way I needed it to so I had the consistency and then like I put energy towards getting the next job that I needed to get my hours so I could finish doing one part that I've been putting off for my career and now I have it and my dream came true because now I get to work from home and that's all I ever wanted I was like can I just do telehealth why do I have to go in why do I have to do all these things why am I here like I have 50 million things that I want to do in my life and doing your job it's not going to help me get my stuff done. And so it's like now I've been able to work from home. And although it was like a slight balance, because I, I also am one of those people to like you, like that busy thing. I, I always feel like I'm supposed to be doing something. And so when I, there's gaps in like the work, I'll be like, ah. <laughs> but now it's like a balance. And so it's just like, yeah, but I had that alone time. Like I was, you know, doing like little odd jobs, like doing a lot of stuff by myself. I couldn't go out because I didn't have money to spend and then COVID happened so it's like I couldn't go anywhere anyways mm -hmm. so it's like I had to take that time to be like girl <laughs> I was like why did you put yourself in this situation like what do you want like what what are you about to get out of life and I started writing stuff like I've journaled before I'm actually like a poet too so it's like I know I'm supposed to be writing so I like marked up all my mirrors I started read uh writing in my journals I started waking up even like I would my last job before this one, I had to wake up for 4.30 to be to my job for seven. And I would wake up that early so that I can meditate in the morning and also so I could read. Cause I, I love reading, but I stopped reading. Like after, well, during college, I was like, okay, now I have to read. So it was like, I'm not reading for fun. That's not joy. That's yeah, you. exactly. So then it, the joy kind of got taken away from it and then it fell off. So I was like, no, I like reading though. So I started yeah. reading, I started meditating. And when I made that a habit, like, even though it's hard and some days you fall off and stuff, like, I could tell the difference between when I did it and when I didn't. And then I also, like you, I water fasted for multiple reasons, but one being because it was COVID, it was like, no, I need to clean so I can make sure because I have to work now and I'm around people that may be success susceptible to this. So I was like, mm -hmm. let me cleanse. But then I'm, I'm meditating, I'm reading, and I'm water fasting at the same time. And it was just like, oh man, like, can't nobody tell me anything right now. Like, I, I know who I am. Like, and the things that I haven't figured out is not scary anymore. It's just like, oh, like, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see what my next piece is going to be. Like, I'm excited. So, yeah, I definitely feel it's like, yeah. this, it's this healing chakra that's right here that a lot of people don't know about. And it's yeah. like, that's where it's like the connection between the brain and the heart. Because if you listen too much to your brain, you, you might go the wrong way. And if you listen to your, too much to your heart, you might go the other way. So it's like, you have to find that balance, balance. between both. Mm -hmm. there's, there's one other one that um, I want to add to that. So yes, you're right. You've got your mind. This is a healing, you know, this is a, um, your thinking center. Your heart is your feeling center and then your gut. So when you're, you're cleansing mm -hmm. you're, and, you're, and your body is clean, 
now you get to tap into your gut, which is your intuition. It's like when you, when you when people like literally say, I feel it on my gut, that's your intuition. Yeah. It's your, it's your knowing. You're thinking, you're feeling, and you're knowing. Yes. Center. Um, and those, and those are, when those are in alignment, that's when you're really in flow. Right. And it's crazy too, because for me, I get this weird, like when you say you had that conversation with your ex-husband about um, like the breakup and stuff, when I'm about oh, that was, to- no, that was a former, that was a former, that was a relationship post. It doesn't oh, matter. Sorry. That um, doesn't matter. When you <laughs> have, when you had that convo, like I, I reflected on convos I had like that. And it's weird. Cause um, I go cold. Like my, I feel it like kind of go through my ear and my hands and it, but it feels like it kind of like shoots <laughs> across my body. Like it does like this weird, like out thing. And it's just like, I get like, this internal like cold like oh this is about to be uncomfortable <laughs> really interesting uh-huh. i wonder what that represents for you i have no idea but i know when i feel it i'm just like i have to like have an internal talk like no just continue with this conversation sorry it's a little dark yeah, but yeah i tell myself like no you just have to you have to do it you have to do it and i end up feeling good i think it's just maybe it's a feeling of transition like then yes. I know it's coming because it, it's not like it's gotten violent when I felt like that it's just this weird like yeah your yeah. body has so many ways of adapting for the best version of you mm-hmm. um it's interesting because when you know I I was married for 18 years and I was with him for 14 um years and I will tell you there is very little that I actually have memory of very little, 14 years of my life. Yes. Yeah, my body has said to me, like, it's no longer serving you. Oh. To hold on to it, right? There's highlights and lowlights, and I certainly have those moments of like, it's because I resolved a lot of it. Mm-hmm. I've resolved a lot of it. Um, and because we, the way that our situation unfolded, we really didn't have that uncoupling conversation it just it, that didn't that didn't actually physically exist um energetically i had multiple conversations with him about it to where i resolved it within me mm-hmm. within three months um after we finalized you no know, three months after i started working with my coach so we weren't we were barely finalized i was able to look at this person with love and I will tell you, if you had asked me that at the beginning, nope. There's no, I was like, how could I possibly do that? I had all this, I had all this yucky anger, rage, resentment, a lot of very low vibrational things around it. And really within months, I was able to look at this person that was the father of my child and and encase him in love and just just sort of care bear stare love at him in his direction. Even if he didn't, even if he wasn't returning, it didn't matter. That didn't matter. Cause I knew that I was okay in me. Mm-hmm. And I could, I could wrap him in that because if I can do that, I'm creating a safe sanctuary for my baby. Yeah. Because my, you know, from that point of view, I looked at it from my son's point of view. This wasn't his fault. Mm-hmm. None of this. It occurred. It happened, and it was so important that my baby feels safe and loved from his dad and from me. And, and it doesn't matter, you know. There are days that I'm meant to have him by the schedule, and he's with dad. And I, and you know what? If that's where my child is and he's loved, that's wonderful. How lucky is my kid? How lucky am I? Mm-hmm. Now, and I say all this is beautiful and, and amazing. It's not this perfect journey. Like I just really this morning, I just took a nosedive. I was down here, like way down here, and I've been working my way back up to calm, and I'm still working my way on it. Mm-hmm. It's, this is this is a continuous evolution. Yeah, definitely. And it but and it really begins though again with understanding. And loving you. Yeah, and like right now you have the, you have this to remind you. <laughs> it does. I mean, really, this what this is actually occurrence of is it's twofold. 
one, um, we were at this, the place that we were at that night when this occurred, um, there was someone there that I don't necessarily want my child around. Um, and it was, this person was going to be included in this situation. And I knew, I had said to myself, I don't want this person in my son's field because there's such a disturbance around it. And so my son was upset and had already been sort of disengaged and crying, which is why I was on this trampoline alone with him. And I was also uh, going through some stuff with his father and his father's family. That was upsetting to me. Mm -hmm. And I was saying that it was something that I had created. And I had to take a step back and I, and I undid a lot of the yuckiness that I had done for myself. I undid a lot of that today. That's why I was kind of down here initially and working my way back up. And the reason this is that it's come with that. But this is a physical manifestation of all the stuff that I was that I was holding on to that isn't okay for me. Yeah. Um, I like that you said that too, because on my mirror, and it's funny because my mirror, the frame actually broke recently, but the mirror, nothing happened to my mirror. And on my mirror, I wrote, recognize me at the top. And then like a whole bunch of words like around it that like I feel like represents me, but sometimes I forget. And so like I say that to people listening, like, yeah, she, you have a physical manifestation. Sometimes times that happens too. like my cat, like, I don't know if you see it. I took my friend's cat and he scratched me to me. That's just showing me like, yeah, sometimes you want stuff, but it, nah, like <laughs> I didn't need a cat. I didn't need a cat. I didn't need a cat. So it was like, that was like one of those reps for me, but I like the mirror too. So for like people listening, like if you, uh, sometimes affirmations are hard. Some people don't know what to say to themselves, but like, if you figure out what helps you unlock something, like, like even if, like for me, one of the things I tell myself, like when I'm stressed about money, is money flows to me effortlessly, frequently, and abundantly. Because it's just like, sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm never going to have money again. And then when it comes, it's like, woo, and then you feel lucky. But it's like, nah, like, that was coming to me anyways. Yeah. So it's just like, if you have these reminders in whatever way you need it on the mirror, or <laughs> sadly, like, in a scar, like, just mm -hmm. recognize it and let it, like, let it flow through you. Because, like, when you, like, right now you're feeling low, but then you can go and look in the mirror and just say, like, this is what happens when I don't, focus on me and, and realize what I'm doing and that's not aligned with myself, then I'm going to have consequences. And sometimes the universe bitch slaps you and sometimes the universe is like, it's enough. And yep. so it's like, let's not get to the it's enough phase. Like, let's catch it before it gets too bad. And let's, and I'm going to go on the, on the reverse of that as well, because really life is meant to be easy. And the universe is always actually conspiring in your favor. So if it's, if it's showing up in ways of injury or dissuasion to go down one path it's dissuasion to, to go down one path because there's another one that's, that's even more amazing and beautiful for oh, you sorry you know? that. So, <laughs> i did huh? that the wrong way i thought you were gonna say that like when the the universe is, door. is deterring you from going like continuing but yeah you went the other way <laughs> it is it is I mean, it's deterring you from something that's not good for you so that it shows like that door is closing so another door can open yeah and, and, have to have the courage to allow for the flow to just float through it, float towards it. Exactly. Because it will feel good. Like I came home yesterday from a, a girls' weekend, and I had been I, I've been having some things like within my being that I wasn't feeling safe within myself. I even said that out loud. And so on my drive home, it was a five-hour journey home. I just sort of asked my guy. I asked my guys. I said, you know, please, just please wrap me in love, make me feel safe. I want to feel safe. And when I got home and I live in a five bedroom house, predominantly by myself and when my son isn't here and I got home, I had an invitation for a 4th of July party waiting for me. My neighbor's child was out and then I went for a walk because I wanted to like move my energy because I'd been driving for five hours. And I went for a walk and my girlfriend was out watering her plants. And I was like, oh, okay. I am loved. Mm -hmm. There are people around that, like, the universe does love me and supports me, and I, I'm going to receive. That's lovely. <laughs> That's so good. Well, can you plug um, your coaching information yep. for people that have, like, um, connected with you during this time? 
Yeah, absolutely. So best way to find me is on my personal Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash jocelyn.bellowswhitehead. And you can also follow me on Instagram at what's your leap. Uh, you'll also find information about my podcast there. I also have a podcast that I think I sort of referenced it briefly. Um, it's called Leap, and I interview coaches and healers about them taking their own leap of faith and starting their own journey um, and their own business, which is inspiring to me because I, the reason I coach and the reason I'm a breakup to wake up coach is it's my own journey. Yeah, I had to, I had to learn these lessons by walking through that dark pathway, and I will tell you I didn't walk alone. Yes, I walked alone, and I had a guide. I had my, I've had multiple coaches. And so as a coach myself, I'm here with you. It is your journey. I'm just here to ask you questions and hold your hand energetically as you look in those dark corners of fear, because fear is all up here. And when we get to break through that, we get to live this life of joy and abundance and peace. Mm -hmm. That's what I want for everybody. Because I didn't believe it either until I did it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh my gosh. What is this? I want all of this all the time and I want other people to feel it too. Yes. So what's your leap on Instagram? Jocelyn dot Bellows Whitehead face on for Facebook. Um, what's your leap at Gmail is also your email for people who want to just reach out through that way. Yep. And then the actual podcast is Leap. Is that on all platforms or are you um, on it is. And it's so actually gonna be found under what's your leap? What's your leap? What's your leap? The okay. name of the show is Leap. Um, the handle was already taken. <laughs> So <laughs> what's sleep and you can find me on any, um, any, any platform. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, everybody reach out. And then for people who are looking to connect more with me, Oh, side note, um, before I get into that for other podcasters and you could be any type of podcaster, but just know, depending on what lane you fall under, we might need you more so as an ally or a sponsor. But um, I'm also the nominations director for Black Podcast Awards. So you can find that at blackpodawards.com and Black Pod Awards on Instagram and other social media platforms. Our award ceremony is going to be September 27th. So please apply. Um, and if you're not ready or if you see something, this is the first year. So if you see something that doesn't make sense or maybe it doesn't apply to you and you have questions, you can reach out to me at perkyperspectivespod at gmail.com. And um, if maybe you just started and you don't feel like you can apply yet, then you can always be put in as interest for 2021. So you can let us know about that and we'll put you in for that. But yeah, applications close at uh, August 1st. So please go ahead and apply. We have uh, almost just a month. So it was like a, a day shy of just a month left to apply. So please go ahead and apply and let us know what you think. And outside of that, um, you can find me on Instagram. Um, my personal is Perky Sexy Cool. And then my podcast is Perky Perspectives. Uh, you can find me on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the good ones. <laughs> and um, I'm always looking for guests. That's how Jocelyn found me. So if you guys uh, want to share your story, you can also reach out to me for that. And outside of that, Thank you guys for joining us and being a part of this journey. I feel like I took some leaps myself that I did not intend to take today, but that's how life goes. Yeah. <laughs> so, the joys and surprises of it. Yeah, it felt good though. Like it felt good to know that you connected with me on some of my stories. So I didn't feel alone. And then like, um, just knowing that, like, I mean, you saying you got married at 32, I was like, okay, huh. I got time. Like I don't have to rush. Listen, <laughs> I, I know. I know we're kind of ending this show. However, I have a girlfriend who got married in her at two, actually two girlfriends that got married in their forties and blissful. I mean, blissfully, peacefully, beautifully happy. Yeah. You yeah. know what? We're all on our own journeys. Yeah. And I'm not going to rush anymore anyways, because they're saying that there's people that are living on this earth right now that will live to be 130. So me getting married in my thirties, like that's early. That's like teenage. Like, <laughs> it happens <laughs> when you're ready. The, yeah. universe, the, the universe will deliver that to you when you are ready. Yeah. And that's you how just I'm to show up. Mm -hmm. I'll be there when it's ready with whatever color dress I decide to wear. Cause I do me, but um, <laughs> I'll be there, <laughs> but thank you. I definitely will be reaching out to you more and please like your friend that 
is learning so much about her period journey, even at her age, like please send her to, to the website. It's tinyurl.com slash love period project. So if she wants to share from her own point of view too. Like I'll definitely welcome her, but yeah, that's interesting. So, I, will. I absolutely will. <laughs> okay. Have a good rest of your day and put some ice on your eye, please. I know. <laughs> it's getting better. It is, I swear, it looked way much, but way better than it, it did. So, all good. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>